High Income Nation. Yes, we've been hearing that phrase a lot lately. It's tied to Vision 2020, our master plan to become a developed nation by the year 2020. But what exactly is a high income nation and why should it matter? Does it mean you will have a higher income? Does it mean that the cost of goods will rise? Does it mean we can all retire in 2020 and lead the good life? Hmm, that does sound pretty good actually. You know what time it is? Yes, it's time to top up knowledge. First, let's get the theoretical stuff out of the way. Currently, the World Bank defines a high-income nation as one with a per capita GNI of 12,476 US dollars or more. But by 2020, this figure is estimated to be at 15,000 US dollars. That is the target that the government has set. Wait a minute. What is GNI, you ask? Well, in case you missed it, why don't you watch this video to get a better understanding of GNI and GDP. In the 60s, 70s and 80s, we were a strong developing economy. Our labour costs were low and that attracted foreign companies to set up operations here. Manufacturers are always looking at ways to reduce costs and that's just how business operates. But we can't always be dependent on providing cheap foreign labour. The fact of the matter is, Malaysians desire a better life and we no longer want to take on the low cost jobs. Just step into any mamat now, you hardly find Malaysians working there. In a way, it is a positive sign that we are aspiring towards better paying jobs. But how do we ensure we can all take part in a high income economy? Well, we have to look at ways of moving up the value chain so that we can charge more money for our services. Remember that episode on standards? We spoke about developing a premium blend of Tetari so we can export it. Yes, it was just a concept, but you get the idea. We move up the value chain by increasing the quality of our products and services, thereby being able to attract higher wages, which in turn leads to a higher GNI. Companies like Intel, Western Digital and Strand Aerospace are no longer looking to Malaysia merely to set up cost-effective assembly. They are hiring Malaysians for their R&D and engineering operations. It is an example of us successfully moving up the value chain, with these Malaysians in turn earning higher salaries and increasing their expertise. Another issue we constantly hear about is our purchasing power. That's simply how much we can stretch our dollar, or ringgit to be more exact. Well, maybe it's good to look at the Big Mac index. Yes, you heard me. Big Mac. It's simply an informal way of measuring the purchasing power parity between two currencies. It compares the price of a Big Mac anywhere in the world, and according to the rankings by The Economist, we are the fourth least expensive country in the world to buy a Big Mac. So with the current exchange rates, where one ringgit is only equivalent to 32 cents in the US, we can actually buy almost two Big Macs in Malaysia for the same price of one Big Mac in America. Now that's supersizing me. But let's come closer to home. Singapore is now a developed nation, but it wasn't so long ago that they were a developing nation just like us. They've managed to move up the manufacturing and technology value chain ahead of many other Southeast Asian countries. They are also a major leader in financial services. But when you think of Singapore, one common impression is the high cost of living. So does this mean that we will have to deal with higher costs if we were to become a high income nation? Well, yes and no. Certain things will definitely cost more as we move up the value chain, but certain basic necessities would still be subsidised to keep it affordable. And we will always desire cheaper cars, that's for sure. But the main push towards a high-income nation is ultimately to improve our quality of life. Better healthcare, better education, better jobs. What won't change, though, is our need to continue to work hard, because developed nations grow at a much slower pace due to smaller margins of gains. But if we could all be rich, that's a goal worth working for. Yeah.